Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Blue Rats All Seeing Arbiter deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the 6 mana 5 4 avatar with flying that when it enters a battlefield or attacks, lets us draw two cards and then discard a card, so immediately provides card advantage when it comes into play. And then whenever we discard a card, can be with the Arbiter's ability, can be with another card, then a target creature an opponent controls gets minus X minus O until end of turn, where X is the number of different mana values among cards cards in our graveyard, and lands also have a mana value of 0, so if we take a look at the deck we've got a very wide range at 1, 2, 3, couple 4s, 5 and eventually 6 mana, so the Arbiter can easily shrink something down all the way to 0 power. And then Arbiter also combines very nicely with Fable of the Mirror Breaker, in particular a reflection of Kiki Jiki, which can copy the Arbiter. And once we get multiple copies in play, we can shrink down multiple creatures and of course draw a ton of cards in the process as well. So that's one of the great combos that this deck is capable of. Then taking a look through the rest of the deck, kind of your typical blue-red spells deck, with three copies of gold span as well, turning treasures into two mana as opposed to just one, which also works well with cards like Big Score, which we can now cast for two treasures, and will replace itself with two additional treasures, and then also can maybe discard cards at instant speed to enable the All-Seeing Arbiter, so that all works very nicely together. At one mana we've got the typical interaction with Fading Hope, Strangle, and two copies of Voltage Surge, which can maybe sacrifice a treasure to deal 4 damage at instant speed, so they all have their advantages and disadvantages, and that's also a good reason to include so many 2-offs in this deck, because we have so many draw and discard between Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Big Score, and All Seeing Arbiter, we can kind of dig for those more niche cards that may not be great in every situation, but if we do manage to draw them in the right matchup, they'll be a lot more effective. Then at 2 mana we've got a bit of counter magic with 2 copies of Jory Disruption, which we can also play as a land, negate to counter non-creature spells, more spot removal with a Dragon's Fire with our 3 gold spans to maybe deal 4 damage with it, and then of course Expressive Iteration as a great 2 for 1, then Shatter Skull Smashing as a land slash a removal spell, Crush the Weak as our sweeper of choice that also exiles creatures, and then we already discussed Fable, 2 copies of Prismari Command, which can also maybe deal with artifacts, and can also draw and discard, and then we've covered every main deck card except for the mana base, where we have some creature lands with Hall of the Storm Giants and Den of the Bugbear, which can also help close out the game, and then Soaring City and Crucible can also be channeled and also discarded to maybe help with the All-Seeing Arbiter. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Could use some more cheap interaction, but for now we've got our... Fable and big score to keep digging. Iteration, also nice two for one. Against an aggressive white deck, I could have just fired off Iteration to um, maybe find a cheaper removal spell. Now I'm tempted to Prismari Command. And then I guess we can wait and see what opponent plays next, but definitely want to cast it before Aspirin triggers. Opponent Red White, Cavalier. Okay, so kill Aspirants. And then do we want to loot or make a treasure? I think we want to try and find some interaction, although if I make a treasure we could top deck Goldspan Dragon and cast it, which is a huge deal. And then I'll have to decide between Iteration or Fable next turn, or potentially play both. So I guess we'll start with Iteration. Finding Fable, which we can just cast. Sure, so... I guess uh, this enhance, play the Mountain. Doesn't block Cavalier profitably, but keeps the cards flowing, and eventually Reflection could be great too. Brutal Cathar, Exiles or Shaman, pretty nice answer. Okay, Shatter Skull Smashing, we probably want to cast here, killing Cavalier. Now, taking a look at the rest of my hands, 
Don't know if I have time for another Fable, might be too slow. So we'll discard that, plus a Lance. Alright, not the best set of draws. So I think I have two Smashing, Kill Cavalier, still leaves Den of the Bugbear and Brutal Cathar as problematic cards. But bouncing with Soaring City would not count as casting a spell, so then this would transform, which we probably want to avoid. Opponent fires up Den. Down to 8 we go. And it transforms to Knight. Okay, so now what? I could pass with my... Instant speed plays available, which includes Crucible to make some chum blockers. Or we could main phase Big Score to maybe find something useful. And then if I find a second spell I can cast, it would transform back to Day. Which we also probably want to avoid. So I think we'll just pass, and then we'll see what the opponent uh, decides to do here. Need to find Goldspan or Arbiter to stabilize. Opponent fires up then. Okay, so do we want to big score? Hope to find Voltage Surge or Dragon's Fire? Or do we plan on channeling Crucible, which can chump both three powered creatures, eat a 1 1? But we also didn't make a ton of progress. I think we probably big score. Alright, Jewelry Disruption, not what we need. Could still channel. So I guess we'll let them attack. Could also trade Reflection for Den of the Bugbear. I think I'd rather do this. And initiate the play. Okay, Strangle's not bad. If I want to kill Brute, it's going to cost me 3 life as a problem. Now we could also start blocking with all of the Storm Giants. Or I can play Fable and then copy the token with Reflection. Which is pretty cool. And then I could strangle the hopeful Initiates as well, for instance. Still kind of a precarious position, so if I play Fable, Strangle, Activate Reflection, I would have to play Soaring City if I want to keep up Jory Disruption, which may or may not be relevant. We'll go with that line. Alternatively, I can just kill the Brute to get it out of the picture, because otherwise it's going to transform back into Brutal Cathar. And exile my token, I can copy it, but that's still kind of bad. So I'll just get rid of the Brute now. And then play Soaring City. Pass. And then hope we can counter something here. Another Brutal Cathar. That happens. Because after my token, which I can still copy on the way out. Another Brutal Cathar will counter. And probably not going to see any attack unless they're holding a Royal Eruption. Although at this point they can just kick it to deal 5. Voltage Surge, nice. So I don't think we want to get rid of it, even though finding a creature to copy with Reflection would be nice too. And then if I keep Voltage Surge, what to do with it? If I kill Brutal Cathar, I still don't have a great answer to Den. They still get to train Initiates. So I probably need more than Voltage Surge, maybe an Arbiter to help us stabilize. Well, there we go. 
So play Arbiter. And we can copy it with Reflection. So that's an awesome way to stabilize. But we're definitely within burn range. So not feeling too comfortable. Another hopeful initiate's fine. And then we want to end of turn activate Reflection so the Arbiter copy gets to persist throughout our next turn and attack as well. Opponent does not attack. Copy Arbiter. And now we get to shrink down multiple things. Okay. Start with iteration. Finding Dragon's Fire Voltage Surge looks good. So enhance Dragon's Fire. Play Voltage Surge. Kill Brutal Cathar. And then can probably afford to attack with both Arbiters. Want to try and close out the game next turn. Okay, perfect. Crush the weak. We could also cast if we wanted to. Although I think I want to hang on to a uh, reflection of Kiki Jiki here, so. Could play Fable. Probably going to be better off passing with Jory Disruption, Dragon's Fire, and Copy with Reflection. In case I do play a Kick Droil Eruption. They've got the land, so Kick Droil Eruption still kills us, I think. Unless we can draw into something with Arbiter. Yeah, Kick Droil Eruption with one mana to play for Jory Disruption. So I need to draw into a Negate with Arbiter here. After copying it. Uh, copying Reflection to make Reflection copies probably doesn't accomplish much here. Alright, big top decks coming in. Big score we can still cast. So, Ditch Crush the Weak. And then we got a big score into a negate. Come on, negate. Alright, there we go. Negate your Royal Eruption. Opponent's not going to be dealing any damage with her minus 14 powered initiates. And next turn we can copy Arbiter once again for the win. Awesome. Great game against Red White. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And what do we think of this opener? Looks reasonable enough. A little bit of early removal with Dragon's Fire. Turn 1, might want to play Tapped Smashing. Turn 2, Hall. We'll keep up both our instants. And then we've got uh, some nice creatures to work towards. Opponent red-white. Maybe more controlling builds. And yeah, we'll just play Fable here. May see removal on our Shaman. Dragon's Fire. So probably don't need Crush the Weak, so can discard that with Fable. Opponents get their own. And then do we want to keep a second Fable of the Mirror Breaker? And then we could just take the damage from the opponent's Shaman. Or we can kill it with our Dragon's Fire. I really want to hit my land drops. I feel like Negate's going to be good in this type of matchup. 
So maybe we just ditch Crush the Weak. And then... Do I get rid of Fable as well? Yeah, I really want to hit my land drops and I think the top end creatures are going to be better than Fable overall. Okay, so now we can kill the Shaman and keep up Negate. And then next turn we've got Goldspan, keep up Negate. And then Arbiter is going to be great with Reflection of Kiki Jiki if we get that going. Alright, opponent does look like a Velomachus Reanimator deck, so happy to have Negate to counter a potential Invoke Justice, although our opponent does have a lot of red mana in play. Restoration is pretty good. I think we still let that resolve and keep Negate for Invoke Justice. And then for now, get to play Goldspan, attack and keep up Negate once again. Big score is also pretty decent with a gold span in play. So yeah, excited for next turn. Opponent gets back one of their dual lands. Gets Reflection in play. If they kill Reflection, I think we let that happen, even though it would be great with gold span and Arbiter. I think Negate's gonna have bigger targets. So, can attack with the gold span and then play Arbiter. And then I think I use at least one treasure here. Okay, iteration's nice, so one land can go. And then probably just play lands and pass. Opponents looking through their graveyard for invoke justice. That's not gonna happen. And then we want to go digging for additional copies of negate. Maybe a Fading Hope to bounce Velomachus. And there we go, another Negate, awesome. Could even activate Hall of the Storm Giants, but they can just jump with a 1-1, so it doesn't seem as exciting. So we'll Iteration first, finding another Gold Spain. And then... We can... Attack with both. Thirteen damage coming across. Shrink down Architect. Can counter a Sweeper. Although even if a Sweeper happens here, we still have our creature line to close out the game. Burn down the house, yep, we'll negate that. And that should be game. So yeah, we got lucky to find our two copies of negate, but that's also where all the draw and discard comes in handy to find those more specific cards. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, hand is acceptable. Turn to disruption. Or we could foretell Crush the Weak. Up against the Blank Green. Yeah, I guess I'll foretell here. There's not too many scary 2-drops on a Blank Green that I'm worried about. There's also an argument that Blank Green doesn't have many creatures we necessarily need to Crush the Weak. So we might be better off discarding it with big score, but... Falky stealing gold span. They do see Jory Disruption, so they can sort of play around it now. But that's okay. Think we'll pass with Prismari Command up as opposed to Crush the Weak. Okay, 
Take two. And a shakedown heavy. Alright, so opponent's probably a fight rigging deck. So if I Prismari Command killing Valky, making a treasure, we can cast Goldspan next turn. Although the problem is we won't be able to counter fight rigging or interact with a shakedown heavy, so I think I'm better off countering the shakedown heavy. And then give up on the turn four Goldspan dream. Okay, so now. What are we thinking? Probably pass with Big Score Prismari Command, kill Valky to get back our gold spend next turn. But do enough to kill it now necessarily. Maybe in case they have another Valky, I would rather not get the gold spend back in my turn. So we'll take two. Land four. And they seek us Chariot, we can destroy it with Prismari Command. And then Crush the Weak would clean up all the tokens. So how about we destroy Chariot, make a treasure, and then next turn I can Crush the Weak to clean up everything and cast Goldspan. That should work. Artifact, make a treasure. And then we'll still have our big score available. Now binding the old gods is somewhat likely. So that might answer gold span and then we're not in great shape anymore. Just another shakedown heavy. Alright, so now we need to find some bound spells or an answer to a potential copy of fight rigging. Second big score first, maybe using my treasure for two mana. In case I top deck another gold span. And we did. So we can play gold span. And then probably use these for two mana each. Attack, and then we can still iteration second main. And see what we can find. Perfect. Arbiter in hand. And then we can cast our Fading Hope to bounce Shakedown Heavy, so there's no risk of any shenanigans. Yeah, this was pretty much the perfect sequence for us. Don't think we need Jewelry Disruption. Bona needs to answer Goldspan. And then we still have an Arbiter to follow up. And our opponent packs it in. Perfect. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Fine hand. A little bit of early interaction. Keep up Fading Hope. Opponent also blue-red. Make that Grixis with a Tainted Indulgence, a Reanimator. Fading Hope's not bad at bouncing one of their big creatures back. I think I have to play a red source if we want an iteration next turn. Even though Hall will come into play tapped later. So our hands could use a couple counter spells, maybe a gold span to apply pressure. For now, probably fine to iterate. Opponent's gonna indulgence in response. So turn 5 is when we can expect them to reanimate their first creature. And uh, yeah, our iteration not too exciting. We'll have to discard to hand size as well.
Indulgence number three. So they've got Titan, Warden, and Swirling Sky to reanimate now. Yeah, let's iterate again, hoping to find a negate or jewelry disruption at least. Do not find any. So in hand we'll put Arbiter. And play Tapped Hall, I guess. So which creature they're gonna bring back first is a question. Maybe a Swirling Sky, which has built-in protection with Ward, but at least bouncing it doesn't trigger the death ability. It's gonna be a Titan of Industry instead, so we'll send that packing. Bone put Shield Counter on their Rhino, that's fine. Still bounce Titan here, I think. And then probably pass with our Soaring City available. And then we'll chain together some Arbiters. Opponent hits us for four. I'll take it. See if they want to reanimate something. How many mana values do they have? Three, so still no instant speed reanimation here. It's gonna be a Fable. It's pretty good, helping them discard Titan again. Not sure if I should bounce the Goblin Shaman. Meeting Massacre for zero. Um, how much do we care about the extra mana versus a 4-4? Four -four? The extra mana could make a potentially bigger difference, especially with Arbiter shrinking down the Rhino anyway. So we'll play Arbiter. And more lands. So discard one hull maybe. Discards Coma and Titan of Industry. A Rhino attacks. Can take one. Possible they have a three damage burn spell like Strangle to finish off Arbiter if we blocked. Or Cathartic Pyre. It's gonna keep on digging, so maybe they don't have a reanimation spell left. A very full graveyard. Alright, five mana. They have four out of five mana values, so still no insta speed reanimation. So graveyard shift sorcery speed. Okay, so Swirling Sky has Ward, if we want to attack past it, it's going to be pretty tough, and killing it is also not really where we want to be. So, yeah, that puts us in a tough spot. I think we just play another Arbiter, and then take it from there. Discard Lance. And pass it back. Probably want to kill the reflection of Kiki Jiki here with a voltage surge. And then we can try to outrace Swirling Sky if they attack. If they keep it back on defense, we'll have to find another bounce spell perhaps. Yeah, opponent's attacking. I'll happily take six. The Arbiter being 5 power actually lines up somewhat reasonably because that means we can attack past Swirling Sky without killing it and while shrinking it down. So we don't lose Arbiter. Opponent's got an Infernal Grasp, unfortunately. So Reflection has to go. Okay, so with Prismari Command and Voltage Surge, I could deal 6 damage if I really wanted. But killing Swirling Sky and giving them 2 reanimation spells back seems like a bad idea. 
So instead, I might want to attack and then shrink down Swirling Sky. We'll have to pay the ward, so then I wouldn't be able to keep up Hall. And yeah, it's gonna be tough. I think we still attack and see what we draw with Arbiter. And then I have to decide if we want to shrink down the Rhino or Swirling Sky. If I take six, then Massacre becomes a pretty big problem too. I guess we can jump on the ground with uh, Crucible as well. So I think shrinking down Swirling Sky is still going to be our best bets. Okay, Strangle and Big Score. So what do I get rid of? Do I see myself casting a Shadow Skull Smashing anytime soon? Not really. And then shrink down Swirling Sky. Pay the ward. And then we still have some options. If I Prismari Command, dealing to making a treasure. Then I can Voltage Surge and Strangle to clean up all the small stuff. So deal to damage, create a treasure. Voltage Surge, dealing four. And Strangle. Alright, so just Arbiter versus Swirling Sky. But our opponent's got a bit of a life total advantage. And a Meat Hook Massacre in play. And if they find another reanimation spell, it's probably game over. Infernal Grasp killing Arbiter is also probably going to do it here. If we can find a bounce spell, there's still hope. Because we do have a hall to apply pressure with, even though I won't be able to turn it on now. So I guess we big score, discard land. And then have to find another fading hope, pretty much. Did not get there. Alright, GG's, close game. The double infernal grasp ended up making the difference here. So, could attack with hall if we wanted to. a pretty close game overall. Opponent putting that shield counter on the 4-4 Rhino ended up paying off in the end. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems okay. Probably go with a tapped coast so we can set up turn 3 iteration a little more easily. And keep up turn to negate as well. Turn one initiates, we might have to bounce, especially if there's a hasty two drop. Alright, just an attack for one. So, what are they likely to play here? Yeah, most two drops in the Boros deck, they would play main phase. So, I think we can take one and then bounce initiate end of turn so they don't get the chance to replay it. Although I could also keep Fading Hope for maybe a bigger creature like a Cavalier. Yeah, I guess it's also fine. Make them spend more mana replaying it. And then we can still keep up Fading Hope here, assuming we find a blue source. Which we did. In hand's big score. Okay, so we can Fading Hope their next play. It's gonna be a play with Fire Enough Turn. To scry. That's fine. And then big score allows us to ramp into Arbiter. It's gonna be an adversary instead. So I can either bounce adversary or bounce initiates. Probably just go for adversary. And then make them replay it next turn. Mountain on top. Probably not necessary. And then we'll stick to the plan. Big score, next turn Arbiter. So right now we have one drop and two drops. If I discard land with big score, Arbiter becomes even better. So 
So I should probably big score now in case I draw Voltage Surge, which I'm still happy to cast. Alright, Gold Span. Also not a bad one. Second Gold Span plus Arbiter. That seems like a good deal. Opponent may have a Valorous stance, but we can just negate that and we'll get an extra treasure in return, so then we can still play Arbiter's second main. So that works out. And discard then. Shrink down initiates. Even though now they may be able to train more easily because the power slower, but yeah, I don't think it's gonna really end up mattering here. Just too far ahead on board. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Some nice catch up mechanisms with Crush the Weak, Fading Hope to bounce. And then Fable to pull ahead. Nymeria pointing towards a more mid-rangey white deck. Blue-white control, maybe. So I don't think we'll need Crush the Weak, so I can probably discard that to Fable. So I'm not gonna foretell it. Opponent Asper Colors. Raphine resolves. Could bounce it with Fading Hope, don't mind that. That'll buy us some time. And then Jory Disruption. Doesn't seem amazing since I'm probably going to be tapping out for Fable next turn. So I'd rather want untapped lands going forward. So if they replay Rafine, we get a free attack and a treasure. Opponent passes. Okay, so Crush the Weak can go. And then maybe Prismari Command as well. Even though we could combine it with another... Maybe two damage to finish off, like a 1-4. Um, opponent might have a Wandering Emperor here, which we can negate. So, yeah, this seems fine. And then we'll be able to also play another Fable. Could see me took Massacre then from the opponent next turn. Alright, no Wandering Emperor. In that case, do I still want to play another Fable? Yeah, I think that's acceptable. We'll still have the mana to play Goldspan next turn. And we can negate if needed. Aha, uh -huh, Interceptor. That one we cannot negate. So that happens. Okay, now I'm kind of regretting discarding that Prismari Command, which would have been a clean answer for Interceptor, but... Still not the end of the world. Better them countering a Fable than a Gold Span after using a Treasure. And this matchup is not as much about gaining some life, it's more about completely taking over the game. So I don't think I'm gonna play Goldspan into Wandering Emperor, as I could exile it before I get the treasure. So we'll play it a little bit more safe. Alright, there's a Wandering Emperor, do we want to negate that? Yeah, it's probably a fine exchange. Now I'm hesitant to play another Fable into a Meat Hook Massacre. But I guess her opponent has seen enough. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is pretty decent. Some cheap interaction followed by a Goldspan Dragon. 
So we'll hang on to a potential turn 2 jewelry disruption. Fireblade Charger may be pointing towards mono red aggro or goblins. Picked up another burn spell. Don't have a ton of lands, so I might be better off playing disruption as a land since we have a lot of burn spells to play in the meantime. Adversary, so that's more mono red than goblins. Could also just draw a disruption, but I think getting to actually play gold span is going to be much more important. And if I play Jory Disruption as a spell, we're less likely to actually have the mana to cast Goldspan in a timely fashion. So, while it's great to counter things with Disruption while you can, sometimes you actually want to play it as a land still. And I'll hang on to Strangle for bigger things, Charger, not the biggest concern. Reckless Stormseeker, for instance, I definitely want to kill. No need to reveal gold span when three damage is enough. And then we might have to main phase big score so it doesn't switch to knights in case another Stormseeker shows up. Crush the weak also clean answer to charger so it doesn't deal the one damage. I think big score is still a little bit more exciting. And then maybe get rid of strangle, keep crush the weak. Depends if we suspect more three toughness creatures versus two toughness. Crush the Weak has the highest potential upside, although if they play something like a Raiju, 2 damage doesn't do much, but I guess it still cleans up Charger with a counter, so it's still maybe better overall. Alright, Fading Hope a nice solution as well, so we'll pass. Could use a bit more card draw to go with the extra mana from Goldspan, opponent has another Stormseeker. So I should probably bounce that before it gets a chance to trigger. And Strangle now seems like an okay solution to Stormseeker. And then I guess we've got a Hall of the Storm Giants to maybe close out the game. So I'm okay attacking even though we'll take a bit of damage on the way back. Probably hang on to my treasures as opposed to foretelling Crush the Weak. So we'll take four. But now we can strangle plus activate Hall using some of our treasure here. Attack for 11, and yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Okay, leveled up. So we got to see our blue red all-star deck in action, and I was quite pleased with how the all-seeing arbiter performed, a way to stabilize against the more aggressive decks by shrinking down opposing creatures while still providing a bit of card advantage and card selection, means it's going to be great in multiple matchups, and then if we ever get to copy it with Reflection of Kiki-Jiki, we truly get to live the dream, and it can lead to some awesome moments as we saw in the red-white matchup, in case you missed it. So yeah, quite happy with the deck. Of course, Goldspan Dragon is always going to sneak its way into these spell-based blue-red decks that can make great use of the extra mana and the treasure tokens, so that card is just too powerful to ignore, but I think Arbiter could make for a valuable addition, at least as a one or two off, especially if your deck is also running a reflection of Kiki-Jiki. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.